Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is your host, That Creepy Reading, and today we're doing another installment of Long Pasta Friday. Today's creepypasta, Squidward Suicide, also referred to as the Red Mist episode. Without further ado, let's begin. I just want to start off by saying, if you want an answer at the end, prepare to be disappointed. There just isn't one. I was an intern at Nickelodeon Studios for a year in 2005 for my degree in animation. It wasn't paid, of course, and most internships are not. But nonetheless, it did have some pretty nice perks outside of education. To adults, it may not seem like a big one, but most kids at the time would go crazy over it. Now, since I worked directly with the editors and animators, I got to view the new episodes a day before they aired. I'll, I'll get right to it without giving too many unnecessary details. They had recently made the Spongebob movie, and the entire staff was somewhat sapped of creativity, so it took them longer to start up the season. But the delay lasted longer for more upsetting reasons. There was a problem with season 4 that set everything back several months. <sighs> Me and two other interns were in the editing room, along with the lead animators and sound editors, for the final cut. We received a copy that was supposed to be Fear of a Krabby Patty and gathered around the screen to give it a watch. Now, given that it isn't final yet, the animators would often put up a mock title card, such as a some sort of inside joke for us, with phony and oftentimes lulled titles such as How Sex Doesn't Work instead of rock by oyster when Spon this was the episode when spongebob and patrick adopted a sea scallop nothing particularly funny but work-related chuckles so when we saw the title card squidward suicide we didn't think of it as any more than such a morbid joke one of the interns did a small throat laugh at it though the happy-go-lucky music plays as normal. The story begins with Squidward practicing his clarinet and hitting a few sour notes like normal. When we hear SpongeBob laughing outside of Squidward's house, he stops and begins yelling at them again like normal, as he has a concert that night and he needs to practice. SpongeBob says okay and goes on to see Sandy with Patrick. Bubbles splash on the screen and we come up to see the ending of Squidward's concert. This is when things seemed a bit off. While playing, a, a few frames repeated themselves, but the sound doesn't. At this point, sound is synced up with animation, so yes, that's not common. But when he stops playing, the sound finishes as it skips as if it never happened. There were some slight murmuring in the crowd as they begin to boo at him. And this isn't normal cartoon booing that is common in the show, but you could clearly hear malice in it. So, like, it was at some sort of, like, Middle Eastern protest as they were mocking a dictator or something. Squidward was in full frame and looks visibly afraid. The shot goes up to the crowd with SpongeBob center frame, and he's, he's too booing. Very much unlike him, though that isn't the oddest thing, though. What is odd is that everyone has hyper-realistic eyes. Very detailed. Clearly not shots of regular people's eyes, but something that was more real than CGI. The pupils were red, and some of us looked at each other with obviously confused faces, but since we weren't the writers, we did not question its appeal to children yet. The shot goes to Squidward, sitting at the edge of his bed, looking very forlorn. The view out of its porthole-sized window is that of a night sky, so it's not very long at the concert. The unsettling part, however, is that at this point, there's no sound. And I mean literally, there's no sound, not even feedback from the speakers in the room. It's as if the speakers were turned off, though their status showed them working perfectly fine. He just sat there, blinking, in silence for about 30 seconds, then he started to sob softly. He put his hands over his eyes and cried softly for a full minute or more. All the while, the sound in the background was growing very slowly, growing from nothing to barely audible. It sounded like a slight breeze to a forest, to be honest. The screen then slowly begun to zoom in on his face, and by slow, it's only noticeable if you look at uh, the shots 10 seconds apart side by side. 
His sobbing then grew louder, more full of hurt and anger. The screen then twitches a bit as it twists on itself for literally a split second then back to normal. The wind through the tree sound gets slowly louder and more severe. It's as if a storm is brewing somewhere. The eerie part is that this sound and Squidward sobbing sounded real. As if it wasn't coming from the speakers, but as if the speakers were holes and it was merely coming out of the room on the other side. As good as the sound, you know, here at the studio likes to claim it has, they do not have the money or rather the type of equipment that can produce that kind of sound quality. Below the sound of the wind and sobbing, a very faint, something that sounded like laughing came up. It was at odd intervals and never lasted for more than a second, so you had a hard time pinning it. We watched it we watched the show twice, so pardon me if things get too specific, but I've had time to think about them. After thirty seconds of this, the screen blurred and, and twitched violently and, and as something flashed over the screen. It was as if a single frame was replaced. The lead animation editor paused and reround frame by frame. What we saw was absolutely dreadful. It was a photo of a dead child. He couldn't have been more than six years old. His face was bangled and bloody, one eye dangling over the upturned face and popped. He was naked down to his underwear. His stomach was badly cut open with his entrails laying beside him. He was laying on a pavement that was probably a road. The most unsettling part was that that's where the that's where the shadow of the photographer could be seen. There was no crime tape. There was no evidence of tags or markings, and the angles was completely off for a shot that, that was designed to be evidence. It would seem that the photographer was the person responsible for the child's death. We, we, we were mortified, to say the least, but pressed on hoping that this was some sort of fucking sick joke. The screen flipped back to Squidward, still sobbing, louder than ever, and half body in frame. There was now what appeared to be a... There was just what appeared to be blood running down his face from his eyes. The blood was also done in hyper-realistic style, looking as if you could touch it with your fingers. The wind sounded now as if the gale, there was gale force wind blowing through the forest. There was even the snapping sounds of branches and leaves. The laughing, a deep baritone lasting longer and lasting at longer intervals and coming more frequently. After about 20 seconds, the screen again twisted and showed a single frame photo. The editor was reluctant to go back, but we all knew that Somewhere inside of us, we had to. This time, the photo is what appeared to be a little girl no older than the first child. She was laying on her stomach, her barrettes in a pool of blood next to her. Her left eye was too popped out and popped. Na and she, she was naked except for her underpants. Her entrails were piled up on top of her above another crude cut along her back. Again, the body was that on a street and the photographer's shadow was clearly visible with intent to be visible. Very similar in size and shape to the first. I had to choke back vomit on this one and one intern, the only female, ran out as the show resumed. Now. Excuse me, but this is 2005, and I know you horror junkies out there are probably used to this kind of thing, but back then, th th you never got anywhere close to this outside of, say, a Freddy Cougar movie. About five seconds after the second photo played, Squidward went silent, as did all the sound in the room, L like when the scene started. He put his tentacles down, and his eyes were now done in a hyper-realistic fashion like the elders were in the beginning of the episode. They were bleeding, but bloodshot, and pulsating. He, he just stared at the screen as if to watch the viewer. After about 10 seconds, he started sobbing again. This time, not covering his eyes, the sound was piercing and loud and most fear-inducing of all the sobbing mixed in with the screams. Tears and blood were dripping down from his face as a, at a heavy rate. The wind sound came back and so did a deep voice laughing. And this time, the still photo lasted a good five frames. The animator was able to stop it and on the fourth and backed up. This time, 
the photo was of a boy about the same age again, but this time the scene was different. The entrails were being pulled out of his stomach, uh, by, uh, out of his wound, by a large hand. The right eye popped and dangling blood trickling down it. The animator proceeded. It was hard to believe, but the next one was different. But we couldn't tell what went on next. The same thing. He went back to the first and then played them a bit quicker. And I lost it. I vomited on the floor. The animating and the sound editors were gasping at the screen. The five frames were not as if they were five different photos, but they played out as if they are frames in a video. We saw the hand slowly lift out of the guts. We saw the kid's eye focus on it. We even saw two frames of the kids beginning to blink. The lead sound editor told us to stop, and could, we had to call in the creator to see this. Mr. Hellenberg arrived about 15 minutes after that. He was confused who as of why he'd be called down here, so the editor just continued the episode. Once a few frames were shown, all screaming and sound died again, and just simply stopped. Goodward was just staring at the viewer full frame of the face. For about three solid seconds, the shot quickly panned out, and then you could hear a deep voice saying, Do it. We see Squidward. In Squidward's hands, it's a shotgun, and he immediately puts the gun to his mouth and pulls the trigger. Realistic blood and brain matter splatter behind him and on his bed. He flies back with a force... For he flies back with force. The last five seconds of the episode it shows his body on the bed on his side with one eye dangling to the left of his head above the floor, staring blankly at it. Then the episode ends. Mr. Hillenberg is obviously enraged, angry by this. He demanded to know what in the hell is going on. Most people left the room at this point, so it's just a handful of us to watch it again. Viewing the episode twice only served to imprint the entirety of it in my mind. <laughs> And it caused horrible nightmares. <laughs> I'm sorry I stayed. The only theory we could come up with is that the file was somehow edited in the, in the chain from the drawing studio to here. The CTO was called to analyze what happened. The analyst showed the file hadn't been edited over with any new material. However, the Stein uh, timestamp of it was a mere 24 seconds before viewing it. As in... Whoever edited it must have did it literally right before we started. All equipment involved was glitched and showed the wrong times, but everything seemed to check out fine. We, we didn't know what happened, and to this day, nobody knows. And of course, due to the nature of the photos, there was an investigation launch, but nothing came up of it. No child seen was able to be identified, and no clues were gathered from the data above, nor physical evidence of the photos. I never believed in unexplainable phenomena before, but now, now that I've had something happen to me and I can't prove without a doubt anything beyond anecdotal evidence, I think twice about things. And to be honest, you should too. And that was Squidward's Suicide. Honestly, this is one of my favorite creepypastas, one of my first creepypastas, and to be honest, that is probably why the reason I am reading this for you. While you do see cliches like hyper-realistic blood and overuse of children and all that fun stuff, this is one of the original creepypastas they incorporated, which means that, to be honest, even though this may be cliched, this is what started the cliché. So to be honest, I give this story a pass. I rather enjoyed it. It was great. It felt like it could possibly happen, but in reality, we all know that it wouldn't happen. Um, outside of that, I would definitely say it's a lot better than the Ed, Ed, and Eddie Lost episode I did beforehand in this week. I honestly think that this story has a lot more to hold up in, and to be honest, it's a classic for a reason. This is genuinely creepy, and there's nothing more to be creeped out by it than creepy-ass phenomenon. And while this story does incorporate 
scenes of the unknown, paranormal, like it, when it's talking about how there's no sound, not even feedback coming from the speakers, when it's talking about how there's no evidence coming up from the investigation, even ta going as far to say that Squidward had his eye dangling out just like the kids were, which is a kind of nod that I missed in the first part of this. But nonetheless, this is just a fucking fantastic creepypasta, and I hope you guys enjoyed my reading of it. I know most of you who are on my channel are probably new to creepypasta, so that's one of the more or less reasons why I read it. Hope you enjoyed this creepypasta. This is That Creepy Reading, signing off.